In this video, I got my chilada. I'm going to talk about evil women. The second you see this trait in the personality of a woman, run away from those women. Don't look at that woman. No matter. is She's probably going to be very beautiful. She's probably going to be very hot, very attractive. But at this point, if you see this evil trait in a woman or in a man, run away. Don't look back. You will never regret it. And luckily for you all, I've had experience dating women with those traits and it was always a disaster. It was always very toxic, very horrible, short relationship, short relationship span. That type of woman will destroy your life and it's going to be very hard to walk away from this type of woman, but, but you must do that. Now, if you see the sign in a woman or in a man that she is mirroring you, it's an evil person. It's very hard to notice when you don't know about it, but now once you know about it, uh, you, you won't miss it. So when I say she's trying to mirror you, she's trying to be like you. She's kind of, uh, well, there is like a, one very main difference that you need to watch out. Like women, when she likes you too much, she kind of tries to be like you and she kind of tries to make for you to like you. But uh, the difference between just trying to be like you because she likes everything about you and mirroring you is you, you, you need to watch like when you go on a date with a girl like that, you need to watch how she talks to other people. So don't confuse and misplace the, the situation when, you know, uh, it's a psychological trick. Like, you know, when we talk to a person who whom we like, we're kind of trying to be like him and to have the same interest that he has. But the difference between mirroring this, and I remember I had a situation with one girl. So uh, I met, met up with this girl on the party and I start talking to her. And, you know, it's a psychological thing that I kind of see that she has the same interest that I have. She talks the way I talk. She like has the same intonation. She quickly started using the same words that I use, which was kind of like funny, you know, but I like she quickly charmed me in. And the reason why it's psychologically we get charmed into a person who, who is kind of like us, it's just like a psych psychological trick. But what I noticed, the difference that I noticed, uh, her girlfriend came up to her, she started talking to her. And I usually be like childish and flirty and playful when I talk to women. But at the same time, I'm kind of composed. I was like, hey, what's up, yo? So like a nice party. This is how I usually talk. But... That girl, her girlfriend, she was very hysterical, you know, in terms of, hey, 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 what's up? Well, let's call her Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny, what's up? Look at the bag that I bought. Oh, my gosh, it's so beautiful. And the girl with whom I was talking to her, like, I saw that she was talking the same way I was talking. But the second she started talking to her, she immediately started mirroring her. And which kind of caught me off guard. But back then, I didn't know that it's a very evil trait about women. But she started talking to her in exactly the same way. Oh, wow. What a bag. Oh, and exactly. And she started copying and emulating her words. And while I was standing there, like for like five minutes, for some reason, like usually I don't have those situations where I don't know what to say because I'm a like 100% extrovert. But energetically somehow it caught me off guard at the point where I was like standing I was like I didn't know what to say because something was off about this situation like spiritually energetically I, I felt that, that this situation ain't right and then I'm like standing 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 listening to what they say and the second that girlfriend she went away she turned to me and it was a complete switch of personality back to the same situation the way I was but because it kind of caught me off guard like energetically, I was like, I became very like composed and alert. And I realized she became very composed and alert in exactly the same way. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, oh, well, why you suddenly became quiet? I was like, oh, I don't know. I was just like, you guys were talking about your bags and stuff. You know, I'm not going to intervene into your, into your women's conversation. And she's like, oh yeah, she's my friend. And she started talking in the same energetic level with the same intonations, the way I was talking. And it was weird to me back then. And in the future, this relationship turned out to be a complete disaster. Oh my God. And I, listen, it, 
it's hard to say it was a relationship. It was like a quick, brief experience, you know. She just sucked in my balls, and that's about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, she... <laughs> yeah, this is how we roll with those evil people. They're sucking our balls. I quickly got out from a relationship with a toxic woman, but she was very toxic. She was like so... Oh my God, she was bad. I had a few situations dating girls like that. I can... I remember at least three women who had those traits and who were catching me off guard all the time like that. And three times it was very, very toxic, uh, amazingly toxic relationships or brief relationships. You know what I mean? And the same rules are applied to men too. If you see another man who does the same thing, he's trying to mirror you. He's trying and you get immediately charmed into him, but you need to watch. Okay. He talks to you. He's mirroring you. Now he talks to another person. You start seeing, oh, that he's mirroring that person. Like, it's very invisible until you don't know about it. Once you know about it, I'm seeing that all the time, like energetically, like spiritually. I'm just like, oh, I'm noticing it right away. Like the second the person tries to talk to me, he's like copying me. I was like, oh, hey, this guy is not good, you know? So for instance, recently I was at the Walmart parking lot and one guy pulled up to me. Uh, he opened the window and how he kind of looked Slavic looking. He kind of looked like Russian and I guess he... You know, we're kind of Soviet people, you know, we kind of see each other from far away. He turned out to be the guy from Romania and he had the handicapped door on the side and he pulled up to me and started asking, hi, oh, that's a nice BMW, it's E60, right? Oh, I used to work on the BMW factory. So what he started doing, he started trying to be like me right away. He's trying to make me like him. He's trying to charm me in. So just in this little instance, now, now you're aware of that situation, you know right away that these are very evil people. What's interesting, I've seen his car before. I've seen him before. He's pulling up to Americans uh, on the Walmart parking lot because that's where I met him. And so what he started saying that, oh, like, I'm running out of gasoline, like I need some money, you think you can help me out and this and this and that. But you know, Americans, they, they, they're very nice people. A lot of people ask me why I live in America. Bro, I'm telling you guys, American people are the nicest people in the world. I'm telling you, I've lived all over the place. There, there are no one is better than Americans, you know. There is a psychological reason for that. I'll make a future video for that. So it's not like because, oh, Americans like naturally like that. There are certain situations why Americans like that. I'll make videos in the future why it's like that. But all Americans are very nice. So he's like lured, lures them in and they all help him out with money. Hey, but he stopped by with the wrong guy. You know, I ain't playing around with those people. So while he's telling me all this, oh, I need money for gas and this and this and this. I was like, I saw AirPods. You guys know I have a um, weak spot in the, my heart when someone has the AirPods because I, I like to snatch them. I don't know why. They're working though? Yeah, yeah, they work in everything. How do they get charged? They charge in the bottom. They're out. But how do I know they're working? Look, do you see the light right there? Bro, hey, give me my fucking shit. I saw AirPods there. I was like, oh, like, let me see those AirPods. I will buy it from you. And he like started grab that AirPods. He started giving to, to me. So I was going to try to snatch it from him because, you know, he's a piece of shit person. And I guess he felt my energy too, that I'm like plotting something. So he, he pulled it back. What are you trying to steal from me? I was like, no, I'm going to give you $100. He was like, oh, no, 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 show me $100. I was like, get the fuck out, you know? And he quickly drove off. And the good thing is, I never saw him at that Walmart because I saw him like seven or eight times. And I was wondering, oh, like I've been seeing this guy all the time there. Why he's like pulling up to random people, random strangers. He's always talking to random strangers. I was wondering, but now I know what he was doing. He was taking advantage of, of, of the politeness of Americans, you know. Hey, it's been seven months, he ain't showing up at that Walmart anymore. Yeah. And as I told you many times before, God will always punish you through your kids. And that's why he has this handicapped daughter. And, and I guess he's using his handicapped daughter. He's driving his handicapped daughter next to him so he can kind of like get the pizza out of those people so they can give him money. Oh, this is my door and this and that. Hey, I scared him away. He's not showing up his face there. But those evil people, they will always mirror you. Another example of Andrew Tate. Listen, uh, again, like I want to give a warning. I'm not hating on Andrew Tate. Uh, uh, I showed you many times, you know, if you want to be his fan, you're his fan. That's fine. You know, you know but uh, I'm not trying to convince you that he's a bad person. We're just studying him for educational purposes. 
Andrew Tate, he's a grown man, but he like he always tries to be like someone else. I'm just trying to show you how to identify evil people. At first, he's trying to be like Batman. One of the greatest humans who's ever lived. I was obviously, by extension, one of the greatest babies that was ever born. And when I was a child, people would say to me, Andrew, you can grow up to be anything you want. You can be a policeman or a fireman or Batman. And I was like, you're right. That's true. Top G. Top B at the time. Top baby. Like right now, I could become Batman if I decided to. What does Batman have? Fuck loads of money. And he can fight. I got a Batmobile. I got a Bugatti. I got 40 Batmobiles. I have 40 cars. Four zero. Then he's trying to be like Morpheus. He's always trying to be like somebody else. Living inside of the Matrix. And I am Morpheus. Morpheus, because Morpheus dedicated his life to trying to find other people whose minds were ready to be freed. The Matrix is everywhere. Hey guys, I know he, he's making fun, I know he's playing games, but it's just strange. You know, it's always like this. It's always like this. They always, evil people always try to be like somebody else. Ah, oh, yeah, we're playing. Oh yeah, I'm just like playing. It's the fact that he had this idea that he wants to to film a video, like playful video, funny video, you know, that he wants to be like somebody else. Like this, this idea will never cross the mind of a good person, like to be like somebody else, it, like even for, for fun pur purposes. He turned into a Muslim. Come on guys, like his reasons why he be decided to become Muslim because he doesn't like the fact that Christianity has the rule of or oh, show your, your another cheek when somebody hits you. Oh, that's why I just, Christians don't protect their religion. That's why, what, Jesus doesn't exist, bro. He decided to become Muslim. Hey, my Muslim brothers, whatever is written in the Quran, it comes from God. And let's talk about the Quran and Muslim religion at the end of the video. You know, I'm not trying to switch you, but his reasons why he became Muslim, not because he discovered God, not because he discovered Allah. It's because... Uh, it's his business plan, his business plot, his evil plot, because Tristan decided to stay Christian so he can attract Christian people, you know, so he can lure Christian people. And Jute decided to become Muslim so he can attract Muslim people. You see, he's, those evil people who's, who are plotting something, they're always trying to be like somebody else. Come on, my Muslim brothers. Realistically, he ain't no Muslim. He ain't trying to be like Muslim. He ain't reading Quran. He ain't studying Quran. He ain't studying Allah. He's just using God to get to the money pockets of Muslim people because he knows a lot of Muslim people in Arab countries, they have money. That's the only reason. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's be realistic here. What I want you to notice and pay attention, evil people always do that. Now, let's think about it. What does it say about the person who is constantly switches like a chameleon by trying to lure you in. What type of personality it is? He's adjustable. He's adjustable for society. Whatever people want him to see so that people like him, he adjusts himself for those people. Does this type of person has any stamina? Does this type of person have any, his own principles? And again, I told you many times, to be a masculine man, it's all internal energy. It's all about, it's not about your looks. It's not about your muscles or, or businesses or money. It's all about your internal principles. The person who constantly switches himself as a chameleon for others, what type of principles he has? He has zero principles. And the person who has zero principles, who is not a righteous man, who is not afraid of God, bro, for money, he will sell his own mother. And as an example of Andrew Tate, when his dad passed away, he didn't even went to his dad's funeral because oh he had to he had business to run. I don't know if it's true or not, but one of the subscribers wrote me this fact about him. Bro, it's your own father. How can you not go on his funeral? You know, when my dad passed away, I couldn't go. Not because I couldn't go, I just didn't have money to fly there. You know what I mean? Like just like literally uh and and it was too late, you know, and I I promise you guys, I tried to do everything to get to him. I just couldn't pull up all, all the money, you know. But he chose not to go to his dad's funeral because he needed to have a business to run. Come on, guys. This guy will sell his soul to the devil. This guy has zero principles. He's always looking out for himself. He's, it's all about him. 
Yeah, you know, you don't want to be friends with those type of guys. And have you ever guys been scammed by those gypsies? You know, there are a lot of gypsies in actually Romania, in Russia, you know, and, and those gypsies, the way they scam you, they come up to you, they're trying to be like you. Oh, oh, what do you have here? Oh, is it like MacBook or something? You know, oh, like I used to have a MacBook, but it's like really nice. They tr always try to be just like you. So you need to watch out for those people. Again, when you go on a date, if you have a lot of charisma, like I'm dealing with that stuff all the time, like a lot of people with whom I talk, they start emulating me, they're trying to be like me. Oh my God, I don't like that. So you need to be able to spot the difference. So some a lot of times people try to be like you when you're a truly good person, but what you need to notice is you need to watch them how they talk to other people, to waiters or to servers. If you, for example, on a date, if they start emulating the servers so that the server will like them, Oh, it's a big red flag. All right, so look out for that sign. It's a very small sign, but I promise you guys, now, once you're aware of that sign, you will always be seeing that sign all the time in all those people. All right, my non-believers, with all due respect, the class is dismissed. For you, the video is over. You guys know I'm very excited. I always like talking about God, about the spiritual stuff. So non-believers, please, for you, the video is over. Please get the fuck out. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. Just can you just go? Let me talk to my boys, to my uh, believers. All right. Um, my Muslim people, Christian people, Jewish people, non-believers who are interested in spiritual topic. Hey, let me talk to you about this stuff, you know, because I, I don't want to talk about women. This earthly problems don't really interest me. So those guys who believe in Darwinism, in Big Bang Theory, there was a... All right, I'm just playing. Can you just like, let me talk to my boys, you know, my believers. So you probably guys want to know how I found out about this trade, about those, uh, about that evil trade. I found out about this evil trade from a spiritual world. So basically, so basically the Lucifer, the Satan, when you are in his presence, like you right away, like one thing I realized about him, he cannot create anything. Literally, like it's it's really hard to explain in an earth language. He literally doesn't create anything. And actually, you know what Satan sign? It's a torn cross. Like he couldn't even make a logo for himself, which is like, bro, like how can I explain it? That's what I noticed about Satan. This thing that he he always counterfeits everything. Actually, other people describe demons in exactly the same way. So when I had that extensive experience in that spiritual world, that's when I kind of realized, oh, this thing is very bad. And then when I was looking back at my life experiences, I noticed that thing about evil people. They always try to be just like Satan, tries to counterfeit everything, tries to be everything like God, like somebody else. All evil people have this trait. You know, it's so interesting, you know, a lot of people don't believe in God and stuff in that spiritual world, but everything about that spiritual world, it really applies everything on an earth life. Like why evil people have this trait? And there are no exceptions. All evil people, they have that trait that they're trying to be like somebody else. Just like Satan try, tries to be like God, tries to do everything like God. So when he talks to you, he even talks to you in your own I don't know, like, he talks to you in your own voice, which is like, weird. the only thing he can create, only music. And I think it's because, I don't know, is that what's written in the Bible? Because he, like, when you go to heaven, for Muslim people, it's Jannah. So when you go to heaven, uh, you're not going to be li living your life and enjoying your life there. Uh, you're going to have your work there. You, you're going to be assigned to do certain work for God. And I promise you guys, it's going to be very pleasurable work. It's not like the the work on the earth, in the earth. When you constantly struggle with money, with like problems all the time, you're working, you know, there you're going to be enjoying your work. And Lucifer, he used to work as a musician in heaven before he got cast out to heaven. And this is why Lucifer, Satan has so much influence on the Hollywood, especially on musicians. So in order for you to become a really big musician, you have to sell your soul to the devil. And you know, those they have those like in Hollywood, they have those like satanic rituals. You have to sell your soul. And if you notice, all musicians, a lot of musicians, they constantly try to mock God, you know, especially Christians, because Christians have this rule. If you get slapped on, the, on one cheek, show another cheek. It's actually a very good rule. 
and maybe in the future videos i'll give you explanations why it's very good rule and it doesn't mean my muslim brothers if you're watching it it doesn't mean something bad that you're protecting muslim religion it's good too whatever i'm telling you guys quran comes from god himself but it doesn't mean that just because Christians have this rule, it's something wrong about it, you know. But notice how a lot of musicians, they all, like for you to become a big musician, you have to sell your soul to Satan. That's the only thing he can do. He can sing. For those people who like to think the spiritual world doesn't exist, but like what a strange coincidence, right? Lucifer, the only thing he can do, he can sing. And at the same time, the only, he used to work as a musician. And at the same time, on an earth on the planet Earth, all uh, like singers, they all have to sell their soul to the devil. They all worship devil. And it's like, it's such a strange coincidence. Why musicians? Why in Hollywood? Well, because Lucifer, he used to be a musician. So that's where I got my information that those people who mirror you, just like Satan mirrors everything and everyone, and he mirrors God and everyone who he talks to, you right away know that this this guy is evil. Also, what a coincidence, you know what I mean? So, and by the way, guys, I really don't like what a lot of you guys do. You like, I see, I see a lot of you guys, you know, you, you became a fan of me, you know, and I don't like that. You're trying to be like me. You talk like me. Um, because of that, you guys are gonna all end up in hell because you're making yourself false prophets out of me. You know, uh, in Muslim, what I like about Muslim religion, uh, you know, you cannot draw Muhammad and I 100% support Muslim people that they don't allow people to draw Muhammad. You know, remember that uh, in the magazine that draw Muhammad and there was like uh, attack on that magazine. I support Muslim people on that. The reason for that, because Muhammad didn't want other people to draw him, to create pictures of him, because he didn't want those people to worship Muhammad, thinking that he's saint. That's where a lot of Christians make mistakes about Islam. They, they, you know what they do? Oh, like, I don't, what an idiot. You know, that's why I say, guys, I don't like those religious people, you know, fake religious people. They say, oh, Muhammad... He married like a 10 year old girl or something. Oh, how can a righteous man can do this stuff? Or this stuff. Well, he was never a saint. He was a prophet. That's why he didn't want people to draw him. It's an easy explanation. He's just a regular person. You know what I mean? And those Christians attacking him thinking he was like some saint. You don't understand Islam. God damn. That's why I don't like that. <laughs> Even though I, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. You guys, Christian people, what you guys doing, attacking Muslim people, you're making a huge mistake. Oh, you're going to end up in hell, I promise you. Anyone who talks badly about other religions, you're going to end up in hell, I promise you. Because he was only a prophet. He had communication with God and God was talking to him. And for some reason, when you go into that spiritual world, that's where I realized about God, you cannot worship other people, you cannot worship false prophets. And I really don't like the fact that you guys try to be like me. You know, it's a very bad thing you're doing and you're going to end up in hell for doing that. You have to be yourself. God wants everyone to be authentic. The best way I can explain when I went there. So the love that I felt from him, the best way like I can explain in the earth language. Like imagine, you know, when you fall in love. Your, your first love, first time you fall in love with a girl, you know you have this feeling of euphoria where you like that woman just for who she is. You don't care about her money. You don't care about her anything. You just love her. You know this feeling of euphoria? So when you go to heaven, I felt like this oil of love was just like covering all my face from head to toe. Like that feeling of euphoria that you had with your first love multiplied by thousand. And that's the feeling of love I had all over my face. That's how God loves you. And if you ever experience that feeling of his love, there is nothing, there is nothing in this world that I will trade for that eternal feeling of euphoria, you know, if tomorrow I'm going to become handicapped, if tomorrow I'm going to become, I don't know, a vegetable, 
that's fine with me, but uh, like I will like nothing will change my trajectory from following God. I will never sell my soul for something else. Like all I do, all, because all I want to have, all I want to experience that is, is that feeling of God again. You know, if I could just experience that feeling of love for, for five seconds and I have to trade everything I have on this earth planet, oh, there's no questions. I'm trading it for that. But imagine when you're going to go to heaven for my Muslim people is Jannah, uh, which is also translates like heaven. You're going to have this feeling of euphoria of love of God for eternity, for the rest of your life. Oh my God, that's so amazing, guys. You guys can't believe how pleasant that feeling feels, you know, the love of God, you know. And um, yeah, I just want to go there. It's it's so overwhelming. It's his overwhelming love. And when I had this feeling of love, at this point, I like the realization came to my mind that God loves me just for who I am. Like he does not care about my money. He doesn't care about your looks. He doesn't care about your skin color, from which family you come from, whatever. He just loves you the way you are. And after my out of body experience, that's when I truly became authentic. Actually, under one of my previous videos, one guy wrote a very interesting comment. I was like flipping out about people lying. And he wrote a comment. I can't find it. He said, people lie because they do not accept themselves as who they are. Like the person who never lies, he truly embraced himself for who he is. That person is truly authentic. And it actually sticked into my head. It's actually very interesting because I stopped lying. When I experienced that love of God, when I really became, I realized what he wants from me. He just wants me to be who I am. And when I came back to my body, that's when I became that authentic guy. And that's exactly when I stopped lying. So that's kind of made me realize, uh, maybe like I shouldn't be too harsh with people who are liars, you know, uh, because they just never embrace themselves for who they are. But it doesn't mean they're not piece of shit people, you know, small lie, big lie. But it, like the fact that you don't lie, you accept yourself for who you are. You're not trying to be better. You're not trying for other people to like you. You're just, you are who you are, you know. It says a lot about you, about your personality. And this is how God wants you to be. So please do not try to be like me. Do not try to emulate me. You're going to go to hell for that on the judgment day. Uh, you're going to be sent out to hell for making yourself false prophets. You're going to be like, what false prophets? But I like George. He's a righteous person. He doesn't like, I want him to be like him. God will tell you. But you're mirroring him. That's a bad, bad, very bad sin. You know, whatever it's written in Islam, I really support it. That's very, it's very interesting that Muhammad wrote that and he was so strict on that. And I'm very strict on that. I don't like when you guys are trying to be like me. When you guys try to emulate me. When you guys write me messages, George, you helping me with this. You helping me with that. Oh my God, thank you, George. You're saving lives. Oh my God, it really aggravates me. Like, I don't reply, but deep down inside internally, it aggravates me. Like I realize internally it's something that... That is not pride. You know, God wouldn't like that. You know what I mean? Because God, he's very jealous. He's very jealous. He wants you all to love him. He wants you all to praise him. And please, guys. Okay, if I'm a good example for you as a masculine man, that's fine. You know, but just take my traits. Take my take my teachings. That you, The fact that you don't lie. Be yourself. And adapt it to your personality. You know, you have to grow your own personality. You. Whatever you are, maybe you are a nerd, maybe you are, I don't know, a funny guy, a, a, a corny guy, a nerdy guy. It doesn't matter who you are. You have to work on developing your own personality. Okay, if you like my traits, don't try to be like me. Don't try to talk like me. But take those traits, okay, don't lie. And take it to your personality, adapt it to your personality. That's what God wants you to do. Please, do not Follow me. Do not make a profit out of me. It's very bad scene. I, please, I'm big. I don't like that. I actually banned a lot of people on Instagram, and they confused George. 
Why are you banning me? I like you. I support you. I'm banning them. But they don't understand why I'm banning them. Because they're making profit out of me. They're thinking, oh, George, is it because I threw a certain joke you banned me? Come on, guys. You seriously think I'm going to get offended by a joke? Even if it's a joke that you guys are trying to get under my skin? Come on, guys. I'm banning you because I see that you're making profit out of me. It's a bad thing. Please don't do it. Like, I don't need you licking my ass. I need you to be you, who you are, not me. God wants you to be who you are. I think it says a lot about your personality when you're authentic, when you are who you are. You don't bend yourself for others. Well, you are who you are. And if that person doesn't like you, well, screw him. Well, you think I care about when somebody doesn't like me? Hey, get the fuck out. You know what I mean? I am Benjamin Franklin for everyone to like me. You know, let's say virgins don't like me. Black pill community don't like me. I don't care, whatever. I'm, I'm glad that... Black American community likes me. Hey, you guys are my people. You guys are my people, you know. Uh, yeah, so just be yourself. Develop your own personality. Don't be like Andrew Tate. He's trying to be like Morpheus. He's trying to be like ba Batman. No, you need to develop your own personality because it's going to say a lot about you. It says a lot about you when you are who you are. You guys all want to be authentic. Well, this is how you, how you be become authentic. Accept yourself for who you are. Whatever scenes you have, Accept yourself, yourself for your sin. You don't have to be a saint. You don't have to be perfect. Hey, I'm drinking alcohol. I'm smoking cigarettes. Uh, I'm hanging out, hanging out with a bunch of escorts and hookers and strippers, you know. But I'm, I'm not trying to show myself that I'm perfect. God knows that I'm a sinful person. And what he likes about me, when I go to him, I ain't coming in like those fake religious people. Oh, I'm trying to be perfect. They, they, they try to pretend or oh, they're just like good people and this. Oh, God doesn't like that. God likes authentic people. If you're a sinful person, okay, embrace yourself for who you are. You know, you have sins, but you're willing to work on it, you know, to achieve the level of, of, of pureness, of saint, of not saint, of, of cleanliness. You know, the older you're going to get, you have to improve every year. You have to cut out certain sins and work on those sins to cut them out slowly. You don't have to be perfect right away. For God to like it. The fact that you're striving to improve every day, um, he's going to like that. Guys, I'm like getting drunk in that video. I want to clarify a little bit when I'm sober. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people, you know, those really Christian people, those Christian people are writing me. They're saying, George, how come you accepted salvation and this and that? Like... You still like going to women, you talk about women, you know, like uh, how you're going to go to hell and stuff. But what they never experienced God. You see, they, they, they paper Christians. They just read in the, the book. They read that. Oh, that don't do adultery and don't do this and do, do that. And they think, oh, that's it. You go to hell. But what they, they never met him. That's why, remember, I told you in the previous video, God will send all religious people. Oh, I didn't put this video. Yeah. Yeah. So God will send all in the, in the Bible, it says uh, those Christians who will come to God, he will send them all to hell and he will say, I never knew you. What does it mean? It's because those, they never built a relation, personal relationship with God. But what I realized about him, so th those paper religious people who don't know him, they think God is a destination. Oh, you, sol you salvate yourself, you know, you ask for forgiveness for your sins and that's it, you will clean now you're going to enter to heaven. You will never come back to your sins. But in reality, God is not about destination. God is about the journey. The journey. That's the biggest difference. What the mistake that they're making. You know, God is about the journey. You can be a sinful person as long as you, like me. I'm, I'm telling God every day that I'm a bad person. I'm a sinful person. But I'm doing improvement for him. And he sees my journey. He sees that I'm improving for him. And that's what he likes. It's all about destination. It's not, oh, it's all about the journey, not the destination. That's why all religious people naively thinking they'll be, they're saved because, oh, they did salvation and stuff. And <laughs> they're not. So, so for example, God will take to heaven a homeless guy who is sleeping under the bridge who's drug addict, who's alcohol addict, who's sleeping with, with a bunch of women, who's a sinful person, but he is the one who talks to God every day. 
he does stuff for him. He talks to him like the way I do, right? I talk to him. I ask him, what should I do here? What should I do there? Should I do here now? So almost every day I'm talking to him. I'm asking him, what should I do? And he gives me a list of assignments and I'm doing those assignments and I'm being, being obedient to him. Well, many times it doesn't work, you know, but I ask for forgiveness of him. I'm like, I have personal like connection with him. Like I'm talking to him. That's what he wants from you people. So he wants you the journey, not the destination, but those, yeah, those fake religious people, they're all going to help for that, yeah. So, for instance, like, how do they ask for forgiveness of God? They say, oh, ask him for forgiveness, he's going to forgive you. Well, they go to church or whatever, bap baptizing or salvation or whatever, they just, please, Jesus, forgive me and this and this and this and that. I, will, I won't do it again, you know, and maybe they won't do it again, but they won't be forgiven. And compare the difference, I never go to church, you know, uh, how I ask him for forgiveness every day. Two weeks ago, I randomly started, literally, I'm a grown man, I started crying for, for my sins, for my lies that I did in my life. And I asked him for forgiveness four years ago, I was crying. Four years later, I'm still crying. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, like, uh, my tears coming out. Because it's true. I'm, four years later, I'm still crying sometimes, you know, when I have a minute for forgiveness. You see, shit, now it's like taking over, sorry. You see, I'm not faking it. So four years later, every day, and like until the day I die, I will be crying for my sins that I've done when I was a regular person. Compare the difference, authenticity between me, how I ask for forgiveness every day. And those paper Christians go, okay, like, please forgive me. Now I won't do it again. Or they can, and they leave. Maybe they don't commit those sins again. But which is like, I doubt that because like sometimes I, well, sometimes I lie accidentally. You know, sometimes it comes out like this, you know, uh, my own lies. Like it, it still comes out and I'm like, oh shit, I lied, you know, but at least I'm aware of all that compared to the difference, you know. It's like two completely, the difference of authenticity, two completely different things. And when you go on the judgment day, you think God is not going to know he's inside of you. He He knows all your thoughts. You, every soul is connected to him. You think he's not going to know that you asked for that forgiveness in this fake way, just on the word. That's why I call them paper Christians, paper Muslims. It's all, they were fake. That's why 97%, imagine how many religious people out there, like 90% of people are religious in the world. Well, 97% of all people end up in hell, which is like all, almost all religious people. Those who go to church every day. He wants you to build personal relationship with him the way I have personal relationship with him to the point where I cry every day because I've seen him and how embarrassed I am. You can't, you guys, why do you think I'm crying? Because I'm so embarrassed for what I was doing. And I asked him for forgiveness because I did not, I wasn't aware of because those stupid religious people they walk around saying oh jesus believe in jesus christ and this and this and that they're like ah, they're stupid they don't know how to they didn't know how to have an approach for me you know how they how i wanted to someone to talk to me who would explain me that that oh you have to have authentic it's like there's no faking if there is like a little doubt in your thought he he's not going to show up for you he's not going to talk to you that's yeah that's the difference when he first showed up for me I was in such a down position, you know, I was completely destroyed. I was like sleeping in the car. My dad passed away. It's like I was like going through turmoil and he will test you. He's not just going to show up like that. You know, he was testing me and there was like opportunity to start making a lot of money, but in a shady way. And I refused that. And I was like, no, I would rather sleep in the car because uh, uh, I don't know why I said it. And I started proving him. I should make a video how to meet him. But yeah, that's how. He won't just show up for you just like that. He will test you before that. And think about it, right? All you religious people who claim to be, oh, I'm a man of God and this and that. Did, did you go through tribulation and stayed loyal to him? Because I think the reason, again, I kind of feel like the reason why he's so jealous of, of, of everyone because he's been backstabbed so many times and betrayed by Lucifer. Uh, that's why he, he wants everyone to be 100% loyal to him. Bro, when I was a 
going through tribulation while he was testing me. Like he didn't show up for me when I completely submitted to him. Like I didn't know if he exists or not. But I still still kept my loyalty to him. Like my friends were backstabbing me in the back. And while they were ripping me apart and stealing from me in terms of I long story short, like um, after my dad passed away, like he had some like, you know, a little bit of belongings, you know, he was like a simple poor man. Uh, and my friends were like ripping me apart. Oh, can I get this? Can I get that? They were stealing from me. You know, they were trying to get everything I can, like fucking vouchers, you know. And after all this like backstabbing and this and that, after they were ripping me apart, I didn't hate them, you know. I like this is the tribulation when I kind of proved God that I will not how do I say it imagine your best friends were backstabbing you you know and you know about it and you don't hate them for, for that you just like all right the people are people you know and I was like if God exists I'll just like stay loyal to him and he probably wouldn't want me to hate on them. That's that's the type of how this tribulation I went through and I stayed loyal to him. And then there was more tribulation, homelessness and sleeping in the car and refusing jobs because I told myself, well, I don't want to sell my, sell my soul to work for someone, you know, because I said one time I will never work again for anyone. And I fucking kept that promise, you know. And uh, not accepting jobs. People were offering me awesome jobs. Good jobs. Over $100,000. And I fucking refused it because it was uh, like, it was not, I wasn't really helping the society. And I stayed loyal to God. No matter what, I told him I'll be with him if he exists. And only after that, he started showing up for me. He started talking to me. And now he trusts me. And he can't trust me because I will never betray him. You fake religious people, you you never been homeless. You never went through tribulation. You never went through the test. And I guarantee what's going to happen. The second you're going to have problems, you're going to start blaming God. Oh, look, like, why are you putting all these troubles on me and this and this and that? Well, I'm not doing this. If I have go through troubles, I don't blame God. I, I turn to him and ask him, like, gosh, what should I do in this situation? That's the type of intimacy I have in terms of personal relationship. It's a completely different thing than just be, I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a man of God. You ain't shit. All religious people who were judging me yesterday in my videos. When the last time you acknowledged Walmart employee? When the last time you, 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 you helped a homeless guy? Not for the God, because you want to be saved. Just like help him for no reason. I said many times, I always help people all the time for no reason. Like remember I told you, I took out the whole day to help those girls to change their tires. And I wasn't doing it because I wanted her to like her, to like me, because she, she wanted to date me. I said, no, I'm helping you not because I want to date you. Like remember I told you in one of the videos, just like helping you because you asked for help. And I was doing it not because I want to please God. I just like genuinely was doing this. All you can do, religious people. First of all, you can fight with each other. Because you're fighting with each other about false prophets. Because you never met him. You don't really understand deep down inside what God meant when he said don't make yourself false prophets. Christians fighting Muslims. Muslims fighting Christians. Because it's the same rule. It says in all books. But it's one message. We have one God. You can pretend... All you can do, the only good thing you can do in this life is pretend that you're a Christian. Pretend that you're a Muslim. Pretend that you're a good guy. Pretend that you are not racist. That's all you can do, the best thing you can do, you can judge. You religious people judging me, oh, you're drinking alcohol, oh, you smoking cigarettes, um, you're sleeping with a bunch of women. But who is really, really fighting the sin of lust? You or me? The real truth, I swear to God, I swear to God, there is one technique that I discovered and not discovered, developed. I can literally get on the streets 100 phone numbers a day. Any girl I come up on the streets, like I just need to come up 
tell her something, no money involved, nothing. No matter how hot she is, no matter like how unachievable she is, she, she's going to give me her phone number and next day she will be asking me to meet up with her. I know how to do it and I will never share it. I will take this secret to my grave and never, never, don't, don't even ask, guys, don't even ask. I will never say it, but I'm not doing this. You pretend that you're a religious person. If you would have known what I've known, you would be sleeping around with those women. And I'm not doing this because then I'm going to have to break their heart, her heart because women get attached to me. And I'm not doing this for that. So who's really fighting the last year? Who is really fighting the last year? You or me? You don't do it because you can't do it. I don't do it because I don't want to do it because I'm fighting my sin of lust. That's the truth. And I know it. And God knows it. And when you go on the judgment day, there is no hiding. You can pretend that you're a religious person, but you've never met God. You never proved yourself for him to meet you. You ain't no man of God. You ain't Christian. You ain't Muslim. Look, I can't help it. I, I keep crying. You see my eyes? It's watery. It's just like happening like this. Like I, I cannot help. I'm not faking it. You cannot fake crying unless you're a woman. It's just like for you to see how embarrassed I am. For lies I did 10, 12 years ago. And compare this authenticity to, to a normal person. You think I'm faking about God? You guys think I'm talking crazy? You, you guys have no idea what is waiting for you. That hell, hell is waiting for you all. You guys have no idea. idea. I am faking it. I'm not trying to convince you to take, become a Muslim, become a Christian. No, it's all about personal relationship with him. I was atheist when he showed up for me. What you need to understand, remember this. This is the truth. Hell is the place where God doesn't exist. Just remember, hell is the place where, the, where God doesn't exist. That's how I felt hell. That's how I, it felt inside. So, actually, in the last video, one atheist guy, he wrote me a question, why God would send me to hell and this and that. If he loves me so much, you keep forgetting he's fair. When you're going to go on a judgment day, he's going to tell you. He's going to give you, because he loves you, he's going to give you what you ask for. You live your whole life. Didn't want to do anything with God, right? So when you go on the judgment date, if you're not a believer, or you're a fake believer, he's going to tell you. I'm going to give you what you ask for. You live your whole life, didn't want to do anything with me. You're going to get what you ask for, which is the place where God won't exist because you live your whole life without God, right? And remember, hell is the place where God doesn't exist. You're about to see the last words of famous atheists. And what I want you to pay attention, I want you to read between the line in their final words, how they read between the line, how they talk about hell, that don't leave me. I'm so far away from kingdom of heaven. You will see between the line, the truth that hell is the place where God doesn't exist. So it's not like you've been sent to hell. It's the place where God does read between the line. And you will understand why atheists, why it's so fair for atheists. Just because we don't believe in God, to end up in hell, everything is fair.
and my internet turned off. What the hell? I'm trying to upload this video and light gets turned off. Look, 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 Satan's doing his work. He doesn't want me to upload this video. Whoa. What a coincidence, right? I never had problems with the light, huh? <laughs> All evil will be defeated. <laughs> hey, we ain't stopping. Look, what's happening to my light? But we ain't stopping. We ain't not stopping. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see it on the video. I caught it on camera. <laughs> Hey, we ain't afraid of them all. Bro, like, what a... I recorded it on camera. You'll see. <laughs> Where are you cowards? You're scared? You're scared? Bring it on! We ain't no pretentious Christians or Muslims. We're actually doers. Yay! More! Yeah, I'm gonna work as his fighter in the heaven. That's the job I wanna be. I wanna have. Yeah, because he needs people who are not cowards and who get excited when it comes to fighting. Yeah, that's who I'm gonna be. Isn't it God fair? Check it out. Those Muslim people fighting Christians, and Christians fighting Muslims. Well, Muhammad and Jesus, they're all his sons. But you misunderstood what, what it meant to be false prophet. You were fighting with each other. He will cast out both of you to hell. <laughs> Isn't it his fair? And just so you know how he looked, approximately, this is how he looked.